。Hello， 你好，我是 Frank， 你的飞行伙伴。ATR 七十二涡轮螺旋桨客机是我们台湾国内线的主力客机。你想驾驶 ATR 涡轮螺旋桨客机吗？或是想多了解它的系统设计吗？我来分享一位曾经在台湾飞行过的资深 ATR 机长 m a g n a r Nodell。他的频道 Fly with m a g n a 有很多关于这款飞机的影片哦。要是英文对你没什么问题，那赶快到他的 YouTube 去看看吧。记得给他按赞、订阅、分享、留言和开启小铃铛哦。要是带有一点欧洲口音的英文解说，还有 YouTube 的自动字幕或是自动翻译，那你看的有点吃力，或者是有一点黑人问号，没关系，我可以理解。也许未来有一天 YouTube 自动字幕会变得更强。但目前好消息是 m a g n a 机长让我以专业字幕的方式在这里和你分享他的影片，那我们就一起来看看吧。Hydraulic power is used to operate many systems in airplanes. This animation shows the principle. Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an ATA type rating instructor and airline captain. And this channel is all about aviation. Today I will talk about hydraulic systems in ATR aircraft. All ATR variants from the 42300 to the 72600 have identical hydraulic systems. And this presentation shows the main features of the hydraulic systems. For a full overview, please check the flight crew operating manual and be prepared to read for a couple of hours. If you are rated on the ATR, you will know those systems by heart. But there is one little secret you may not know about, because it's not mentioned in the flight crew operating manual, so stay tuned. The hydraulic systems are located in the aft section of the left landing gear fairing. The pre-flight inspection consists of checking that the panel doors are closed, but we pilots like to open a hatch and check the level in the tank anyway. The ATR has two hydraulic systems, and they are named blue and green. They share a common tank. Inside the tank there is a partition separating the blue and green systems. When the tank is full, the partition is below the surface. If there is a leak in one of the systems, the partition prevents the other system to drain out. The tank has a sighting window where you can measure the level of the hydraulic fluid. The color of the hydraulic fluid is not blue or green. We just use illustration with blue and green colors to distinguish between the systems. Each system has a pump that pressurizes the fluid to 3000 psi. This is more than 200 times the atmospheric pressure. The pumps are running continuously when the engines are producing power. When hydraulic fluid is not used to operate any of the systems, it is returned back to the tank. A crossfeed valve can be opened to allow for one main pump to supply both systems. The blue system has a smaller auxiliary pump which can be operated when the blue main pump is not powered. Each hydraulic system has a small accumulator filled with nitrogen. They act as a shock absorber and prevent shock loads and damages to hydraulic lines and connections. The accumulators are the small bottles on the picture. The large bottle is for a parking brake accumulator. I will come back to that soon. The accumulators are mechanical pressure indicators, which can be viewed from the outside. The hydraulic system can also be connected to an external source. Those connections are to the left on the picture. The blue system supplies the following systems. The nose wheel steering. The propeller brake on engine number two. The propeller brake is attached to the propeller gearbox, and when it's engaged, the propeller cannot move and the engine can be run and supply electric power and air conditioning, just like an APU. Flaps, spoilers, they are used to assist the ailerons. 
the emergency and parking brake. The brake is connected to an accumulator that stores enough pressure to allow for six applications of the emergency brake. Therefore, you can land without hydraulic power and still be able to stop. The brake accumulator is the large bottle on the picture. And just to clarify, when I'm later on say parking brake or emergency brake, I mean both. Because the emergency brake is the parking brake set to the emergency position. The green system supplies the following systems. Landing gear retraction and extension. Normal brakes. The hydraulic pumps are powered by electric power. The electrical system is described in a separate video. You will find a link below. The main pumps are powered by AC wild frequency, called ACW, electrical power. The blue pump is powered by ACW bus 1, and the green pump is powered by ACW bus 2. The layout of the overhead panel shows the connection clearly. The auxiliary pump is powered by DC bus 2, or directly by the hot main battery bus which means it can be powered even when the battery switch is off. The auxiliary pump can be activated manually by pressing a push button on the pedestal. ATR has two different cockpit layouts. The EFIS cockpit, also called Legacy, and the new glass cockpit, which was introduced with the 600 variants. Therefore, the indications differ between the variants. Both share the same hydraulic control panel on the overhead panel. It consists of four push buttons and three windows with alert lights. On ATR variants with EFIS cockpit, there are three pressure indicators on the central instrument panel. On the top is the pressure for the emergency and parking brake accumulator. And down to the left is the pressure in the blue system and to the right is the pressure in the green system. On ATR variants with glass cockpit, the hydraulic system is shown on one of the system pages on the multifunction display, together with the AC wild frequency electrical system. Here the connection between the pumps and the electrical power sources are clearly shown. Let's have a look at some scenarios. During normal operation, the pumps are on and the overhead panel is dark. The main pumps are running and the auxiliary pump is in standby mode. When you switch the pumps off, the pressure in the affected system will go to zero. However, the pressure in the emergency brake accumulator is not affected. Here is what it looks like when the aircraft is parked on the ground and we are preparing for departure. An amber low pressure light inside the push button illuminates when the pressure from the pump is less than 1500 psi. That means that the pumps had failed or, in this case, it's not powered. The auxiliary pump low pressure light is not illuminated because it's in standby mode. After a few days on the ground, the emergency brake accumulator may have lost some pressure. To power the blue system and charge the emergency brake accumulator, we press the hydraulic auxiliary pump push button on the pedestal, and the auxiliary pump will run for 30 seconds. This enables us to operate the propeller brake as well. If one main pump is inoperative, the crossfit valve can be opened to allow the other main pump to supply both hydraulic systems. And here's a funny little detail. The on light on the crossfeed push button is white on aircraft with EFIS cockpit and blue on aircraft with glass cockpit. An amber overheat light is illuminated if the temperature in the drain line from the associated pump exceeds 121 degrees Celsius. And an amber low level light means that there is less than 2.5 liters fluid in the associated compartment. In other words, you have a hydraulic leak. This alert causes the crossfit valve, if it was open, to close automatically and remain shut. 
In addition, models with glass cockpit have a parking brake accumulator pressure indicator on the left maintenance panel. It is intended to be used when normal indication is not available. As mentioned earlier, the auxiliary pump is backup for the main blue pump. In normal operation, the auxiliary pump is in standby mode. When powered by DC bus 2, it will run automatically when the following conditions are met. 1. Blue main pump pressure is less than 1500 psi. 2. The propeller brake is released. 3. The landing gear is selected on and 4. At least one engine is running. That means if you have lost both main hydraulic pumps in flight, the auxiliary pump will start to run automatically when you select the landing gear down. This enables you to use the flaps, the spoilers, the nose steering and the emergency brake, which are needed for approach and landing only. The green hydraulic system does not have an auxiliary pump. It is not necessary. The landing gear can be lowered with emergency procedure, which is by gravity, and the normal brake is backed up by the emergency brake. You just need a longer runway. The hydraulic auxiliary pump push button on the pedestal is used to activate the auxiliary pump manually. This time the pump is powered by either DC bus 2 or, if that bus is not energized, by hot main battery bus, even when the battery switch is off. This is practical if you need to charge the parking brake accumulator, for example, after towing the aircraft. When the battery switch is off, the pump runs as long as the push button is pressed. When the battery switch is on, the pump runs for 30 seconds after you have pressed the button. As you can read on the pedestal, it says that the push button is for ground control only. This is correct for early ATR variants. But on later variants, such as the 500 and the 600, the auxiliary pump can be operated in flight. Some ATR pilots may not be aware of this, because it's not written in the flight crew operating manual. But if you open a quick reference handbook and read the procedure for forced landing and ditching, you will see that the push button is activated to allow for the flaps to be extended. This is very important because the flaps in landing configuration reduces the stall speed so much that the kinetic energy of the airplane is reduced by 40%. That's all for this time. Please support the channel by clicking like, subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you for watching and happy learning! ATR-72飞机是不是又更了解了呢?